big, rich Italian white wines. We're going to talk about it in this episode. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Exotic Wine Travel. I am your host, Matthew Horky. We're here at the Villa Familia in Istria, Croatia. Uh, that's why you saw the introduction video. We're kind of, <laughs> we've been locked down in Croatia for a few months, so we're staying in Istria, uh, ha- visiting producers, trying to taste through and create as much content as possible for you. But today we're going to talk about a region that's very close to Istria. It's one of my favorite regions in the world, Friuli Venezia Giulia. Uh, For those of you who don't know, Friuli Venezia Giulia is in the very northeast part of Italy, on the border of Slovenia. Uh, Really unique culture, very distinctive wines, was one of the first regions to really produce high-quality white Italian wines. And we have one of the pioneering producers here today. I'm going to taste a few of the wines. It's a region that, uh, you know, m- uh, about half of the production is white. About 45% is actually red. I really like reds. There's a lot of unique indigenous varieties, a lot of also international grapes as well. When you think free, you'll even in Sia Giulia. In general, you can have a lot of cheap Pinot Grigios, a lot of like table type wines, but at the top level, you're going to have rich, complex, full bodied white wines and also well structured red. You know, Friuli Venezia Giulia was leading, kind of leading the way in terms of quality white wines in, uh, in Italy, especially in the 60s, 70s. That's when they started making temperature control, making more modern, crispy white wines. Alto Adige also makes a number, a handful of really, really, really good white wines. You know, Unfortunately for Friuli Venezia Giulia, but fortunately for us, the consumer, everywhere in Italy is making super high quality whites now. Uh, so some of the market share have went down for some of these wines. They're maybe not as trendy as they used to be. Uh, nonetheless, I still really love them and we're going to taste some here today. Without further ado, let's get into the tasting today. I have uh, two producers owned by one family, Marco Falugia and Sorry, Faluga, Marco Faluga, and Rusis Superiore. Uh, it's actually linked actually to here to Istria because uh, Marco Faluga's family was actually from Montevun here in Istria, and then after uh, World War II, they went over to Friuli Venezia Giulia, where they set up their estate. Uh, was one of the pioneering producers in fresh. Uh, crispy white wines, modern white wines. The family also bought the estate Russus Superiore, which is uh, more kind of more of the premium wines. And we're going to taste through two today. I also have a tasting article coming up. You'll have to keep your eye out for that. First one we're going to talk about is the Molamata Colio Bianco 2017, partially barrel fermented Pinot Blanc, Rabola Gialla, and Friolano. So you have an international grape and two local grapes. Uh, I think in the world of fine wines, this is a screaming value for money. I mean, you can find it around the world in the in the twenty five dollar range. Super complex, rich. Uh, I'll save some of that in, for the for the tasting article coming up. Also, one that we just tasted. This is one of the top whites from Russus Superiore. This is the Codio Pinot Bianco Reserva, two thousand and fifteen barrel fermented Pinot Blanc. This is. This is ripe, rich, profound. Rich, round, and profound. This wine is incredible. For those of you that like uh, the bigger California Chardonnays with a little malolactic fermentation, kind of Merceau from Burgundy, going to be really loving this. Uh, I'm not going to get too into detail because I have it up in the tasting article coming up. I'm just telling you, this was a heck of a wine. So let's taste uh, two other wines here today. And I wanted to kind of share a story with you. These are two grapes that are popular but really don't get um, kind of shunned now by wine geeks. So first I have the Marco Faluga, Marco Faluga, Marco Faluga Colio Pinot Grigio Reserva, the Mongris 2017. Pinot Grigio, you know, uh, Marco Faluga was one of the, kind of one of the pioneers of producing, you know, crisp Pinot Grigios, made their way to the U.S. market. Now some kind, times connoisseurs kind of poo-poo on Pinot Grigio because there's a lot of thin, bland ones out there. But the grape is capable of making some really profound wines. Some of my favorites are definitely in uh, Friuli Venezia Giulia in the Colia region and also in Alto Adige. This is partially barrel fermented, partially in steel. I have not tasted this wine before, so I'm looking forward to it. Let's give it a sniff. 
Mm. So this 30% of barrel fermentation here. So I, it's almost Chardonnay. Uh, uh, not necessarily, pe don't think of pe cheap Pinot Grigio where it's all citrusy, bright, easygoing. Think here more melon, more white peach, if you, uh, a little bit of yogurt, brioche type notes. The, the barrel definitely comes out a little bit. Has this Colio clay-like aroma that I find super attractive as well. Some mineral. Let's give this a whirl. This is serious Pinot Grigio. This isn't thin, summer sipping, pool sipping Pinot Grigio. This has got some weight. This has definitely got some density. I really like, I'm liking this a lot. Full body, you definitely can feel the oak. This is for people that like barrel whites. This is the type of white wine that's going to go fantastic with a creamy white chicken type dishes. Bigger fish. We actually had some Dentex and some uh, Gilt Head Bream last night. I think I w wish I would have opened this. Round, creamy mouthfeel. This has acidity. A little bit more acidity than less the, the Pinot Bianco Reserva that I tasted over the last few days. This definitely has some tanginess. Brilliant. Uh, cool thing about Pinot. Really nice wine. For me, it's for me. Uh, I'm going to have to retaste and we'll see how it goes. But I'm, I'm kind of in the 91 point range. I think this is very, very good. For those you want to explore top Pinot Grigios, I definitely think you should give this a, a, a try. For those of you who don't know, Pinot Grigio is the same grape as Pinot Gris. And it's actually, some people think of it more as a red grape because it's got a pinkish skin. Obviously, they take the skins off to make a white wine. They also make some nice orange wines uh, out of Pinot Grigio up there in Colio. Mm. like that wine a lot. Very, very nice stuff. The next is we have the Russa Superiore Colio Sauvignon 2019. I'm super excited to try this because the 2018 was actually named in Vine Pairs uh, Top 25 Sauvignon Blancs from around the world. Now, it's so cool. A couple of things. Colio is, Colio along with Colio Orientale is one of the more famous DOCs in the area. More of the premium wines, the small sellers are going to come from that area. And Sauvignon Blanc in Friuli, Venezia, Giulia, I'm telling you, I, it's one of my favorite regions. When I think of old world, I'm talking about European Sauvignon Blanc. For me, I'm going to Loire. I'm going to South Styria in Austria. And then in Italy, for me, I love the examples from Fiuli, Venezia, Giulia, and Alto Adige. So let's give this a go. 85% steel, 15% uh, barrel fermented. The Sauvignon Blancs and Friuli, Venezia, Giulia tend to have some more weight, more volume. Let's give this a smell. This is exactly, exactly what I like. You know, some of the most profound Sauvignon Blancs I've ever had have been from Friuli, Venezia, Giulia, including the barrel fermented examples from Miani uh, and his neighbor, Meroy. Some of those wines are profound and incredible. This... This part of the world, <laughs> from that part of Italy, you know, over to Austria, this is the type of flavors you're going to get. Uh, you get a little bit of kiwi. It's a little pungent, but not over the top. Think New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. It's kind of in between like a Loire and a uh, New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. There's kiwi, a little bit of grass. Let me, get, let me pick this up here. A little bit of this uh, crispy herb note type deal I really like. Snap green peas come to mind. But still plenty of fruit. I'm really, really digging this. Let's give this, let's give this a go. 2019, super fresh. Really like this kind of stuff going block a lot. You know, for those of you that poo-poo on Sauvignon Blanc, it is you should try the ones from Friuli Venezia Giulia. They are delicious. You got plenty of fruit uh, for those that want to ease into uh, more complex white wines. For us hardcore wine nerds, definitely have still have the grass, some of the subtleties, the herbs. Like I said, snap green peas. Not too over the top in the other way. Not too herbaceous. Not too fruity. Nice uh, spine tingling acidity. For a bigger white wine, a bigger Sauvignon Blanc, this has a city. Some people, some critics of uh, the wines of Friuli Venezia Giulia say that the the wines are too low in acidity. Wow. 
Really like this. Super food friendly. Uh, we were it's wild. It's the end of wild asparagus season here in Istria, Croatia. I'm gonna see if we can pair this with some frittaia, some egg, some uh, frittaia, which is an egg with the anything in Croatia. I, I definitely want to mix it with some wild asparagus. Good wine for me, definitely. And I'm gonna have to retaste over and over again. Definitely at least a 90 plus point type of wine, maybe even more. Really good. Fresh, oh, wow, just really nice wines. Uh, you have to say, check it out. Uh, I'm, you really have to check out the tasting article for this bad boy, the Pinot Bianco Reserva. I'm, this is a wine that you definitely need to be checking out for guys that are like serious age-worthy whites. So, uh, Mark Faluga, Rusa Superiore, good job. I'm a big fan of the wines. I've been to a lot of estates in Friuli, Venezia, Giulia. I've yet to visit this estate. I would like to go there as soon as possible. Guys, check out some of these wines. The cool thing about Mark Faluga, Rusa Superiore wines is they're widely available around the world, uh, as we have a dog, our dog barking back there. <laughs> um, also, check out a lot of different wines from Friuli. There's also uh, his older brother, Livio Faluga, also has a separate estate wines worth mentioning as well so guys check them out uh let me know are you drinking the have you tried the wines from Friuli Venezia Giulia before do you like them guys if you like this video please subscribe to our YouTube channel exotic wine travel I will see you at the next episode